Well, welcome to this edition of the Bartimaeus Report. And I think it's important that when we talk to people that we truly try to understand uh, what, we, uh, what we mean or uh, communicate effectively what we mean when we talk about uh, such topics. And today's topic is going to be about the, the Trinity, a very controversial topic, uh, misunderstood by so many. And... Um, misunderstood uh, by Christians and Muslims alike on really defining what the Trinity is. But before we begin, uh, I would like you to just hit the like and subscribe button uh, so that we, I can increase the number of uh, viewers that I have to, uh, 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 to this channel. And also uh, for you, if you feel that these videos are helpful, uh, that you can uh, share it with uh, your friends, both Christians and Muslims. Now, as I said, that uh, when we discuss uh, many topics with our Muslim friends, that we wind up talking past one another. I've heard my Muslim friends say, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Uh, you hear that very often from um, Unitarians, but in particular, I do hear it from Muslims. Well, true, the word Trinity is not in the Bible but neither is the word Tawheed in the Quran. I acknowledge fully that the word, the concept of Tawheed is clearly taught in the Quran, and so the teaching of the Trinity is also taught in the Bible. But I do think it's uh, that we should begin basically with just basically what a, what a historical and th what the historical and theological definition of the Trinity is. I was at a debate uh, a number of years ago, uh, when, and I can't remember who the individual was, at least the uh, one who represented the, uh, uh, the Christian side, uh, he was debating uh, Shabir Ali on the doctrine of the Trinity. And unfortunately for him, he really did not understand uh, what the doctrine of the Trinity was all about. I, I, had to, I, asked, him, I asked him specifically whether or not he could give both uh, theological and historical definition of what the Trinity was. Uh, he had spent more time attacking Protestant uh, theology rather than uh, defending what the doctrine of the Trinity. He couldn't even define it according to what his own uh, church teaches. And, but that's not new. And what uh, I want to show you basically, and this is what you see very often, uh, mostly from Muslims, but sometimes from Christians or Unitarians, on uh, the confusion they have on to the doctrine of the Trinity. Amadi Dot was a prime example, and I'm going to show you this clip so that you may see how Muslims uh, understand what the doctrine of the Trinity is. The goes in Christendom is that he is one in a Trinity. But the Christian says that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. In his catechism, he continues that the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. It continues, your catechism. It says the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. That's what Brother Swagat says in his book. Person, person, person. But not three person, but one person. I'm asking what language are you speaking? I'm asking, is that English? By God, it is gibberish, it's not English. You see, he said person, 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 but not three person, but one person. I said, Brother Swagat, you and your... Uh, I do apologize for the uh, sound quality of this uh, uh, of the video. It was quite old, well, probably way back in the 80s, and uh, the quality of sound is not... Um, very good. But what do you say? What do you, what do you say to such a, a bogus or a flawed understanding of what the Trinity is? Uh, you notice what the dot has it says. He says that there's not one, one God but three gods at the same time, that we, uh, we believe that God is one and three at the same time. We believe that uh, there are three, you know, not one Almighty, but three Almighties, and then 
uh, he talks about that uh, the uh, catechisms teach that um, uh, Catholic catechisms, Protestant catechisms teach that uh, there's one person and three persons at the same time. Now that may appeal to the um, to the uninformed, but any any knowledge of what is actually what the uh, doctrine of the Trinity is actually about uh, this this is just absurd on, on its face and. Uh, Didat, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say about him. Was he truly that ignorant of what we believed, or was he dishonest? I tend to think that he uh, was more dishonest than ignorant. Uh, he certainly ha has, has had used the same argument time and time again, uh, confusing uh, the being of God with the person of God. And so what I want to do is basically... Uh, I'm not going to bring up so much scripture this time uh, about the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, but I just want to basically, so that we understand and so that we don't talk past one another, it's just basically give you a very brief overview of what the doctrine of the Trinity is about. So let's begin with a theological and historical definition of the Trinity. This is very basic. Uh, there are other definitions out there. Uh, but let's look at this one. God is one in his being and three in his person. And so what we want to do is make a distinction between the being of God and the person of God. They are not exactly the same. The being of God is anything that exists has being. And the person of God is going to tell us who God is. So the being of God is what God is ontologically. You know, those attributes or the stuff that helps us define God as being God. Well, the person of God tells us who he is. And uh, with our Muslim friends, and in particular Amadi Dad, he has confused the being of God with the person of God. And the church made the distinction quite clearly. Again, let's, let's reiterate it. God is one in, his, one in his being. Again, that is what God is ontologically and three in his person. Again, this is who God is. Now, the law of non-contradiction says that A cannot be A and not A in the, at the same time and in the same manner. Again, what the dot tries to do, and I think he's actually trying to bamboozle uh, his audience. He's, you, you notice he got a number of applause. Well, what he's doing, he, he, he's talking to people who are either more ignorant or more dishonest than he is. And I honestly believe that um, since the dot was well-educated and very articulate, that uh, he knew the difference. I honestly think this is just a out and out deception uh, that he was trying to po pose. Because uh, to say that uh, God is one person and three persons would be violating the law of non-contradiction. But again, if we go back to our definition, and we're just going to slide back here for a moment, if I can. I don't think also, oh, okay, it's not going to let me. So let's continue on. Uh, with it, but basically that uh, we, we do make a distinction between the, uh, uh, the, the being of God and the person of God. So, what has done? Well, when we talk uh, the dot and our Muslim friends are uh, confusing category A with category B. They are confusing uh, the being of God which we'll call category A, with the person of God, which we'll call category B. Again, we must make the distinction. So there's actually nothing uh, illogical about God uh, being triune. God is one in his essence, category A, and three in his person, category B. Okay, so let's just go over it again that 
uh, the historical and theological definition of the Trinity held by uh, the early church and by all uh, Orthodox churches, Protestant, Catholic, and Eastern Orthodox, teach that God is one in his essence. Uh, in essence, that what God is ontologically, category A, and three in his person, category B. The person, the, um, the essence of God is what, again, the what God is ontologically, and the uh, person of God is who God is. Well, why is this important? Well, as I said, that very often in our dialogues with, uh, with Muslims and others, uh, we throw words out there and assume they mean the same thing to them that it does to us. And uh, so very often it doesn't. We wind up talking past one another, and therefore so very little is accomplished. Now, my Muslim friend, you may reject the doctrine of the Trinity, and you may hold fiercely to the doctrine of Tawhid, and if you're a good Muslim, that's what you should do. But at least in our discussions, I think we, that we should be able to at least not purposely, as I felt that uh, Didat did, uh, purposely misrepresent one another. I, I don't think that that's dishonest. Uh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to tolerate it with Christians. If I somehow have misrepresented uh, what Muslims believe, then you know you need to call me out on it. You need to show me so that I can be corrected. At the same hand, is that you should, uh, if you're going to talk to us about the doctrine of the Trinity, at least represent it, uh, represent it correctly on what it is. Again. Uh, you know, God is one in his being or essence and three in his persons. So, again, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. And uh, don't, forget, hit, don't forget to hit the uh, like and subscribe button. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And may God bless.